Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Presenting to you the daily quiz for 14th of December 2022. By now, I am sure most of you all have joined our official Telegram channel. If not, you can click on the link given in the description box below to join the channel. Now let us begin and take a look at the first question for today. 3200 Phaethon recently seen in news is Option A. An asteroid Option B. A Japanese lunar landing mission Option C. A natural satellite spotted near Pluto Option D. A ransomware crypto worm What is the context? This article in the Indian Express newspaper today has a reference to the Geminids meteor shower and it is in this context that we have taken up this question for discussion. First of all, what is Geminids? Geminids is one of the best and most reliable annual meteor showers. They are called Geminids because this meteor shower appears to come from the constellation Gemini. But please remember that constellation is not the source of meteors. Now, there is something very unique about Geminids. While most of the meteor showers originate from a comet, Geminids originate from an asteroid. And the name of this asteroid is 3200 Phaethon. The 3200 Phaethon was discovered in the year 1983. This takes about 1.4 years to complete one round of the Sun. And as the 3200 Phaethon moves close to the Sun while orbiting it, the rocks on its surface heat up and break off. And when Earth passes through this trail of debris, the Geminids are caused. So the right answer here would be option A, an asteroid. Moving on to question number 2. He contributed articles to the magazine Jugantar, which inspired many young people to take up revolutionary work during the Indian national movement. His theory of nationalism was based on Vedanta philosophy, which saw unity and oneness in man and God. His greatest literary achievement was Savitri, an epic poem. The personality being described in the passage is Option A. Khudiram Bose Option B. Aurobindo Ghosh Option C. Prafula Chakhi Option D. Rabindranath Tagore What is the context? This article in the Hindu newspaper today has a reference to the Indian philosopher, poet, yogi and an Indian nationalist, Sri Aurobindo. The Prime Minister recently launched a commemorative coin and postage stamp to mark the 150th birth anniversary of Sri Aurobindo. Hence, it becomes important for us to know about him, his life and also his contributions. Sri Aurobindo was born in the year 1872 in Kolkata in West Bengal. Between 1902 and 1910, he took part in the Indian freedom struggle. He helped establish the Anushilan Samiti of Calcutta in 1902. Also, he along with his brother Barin Ghosh contributed articles to the magazine Jugantar which inspired many young people to take up revolutionary work. His theory of nationalism was based on Vedanta philosophy. Please note that during the freedom struggle, Aurobindo was also arrested. This was in connection with the Alipur conspiracy case. He also worked as the editor of Bande Mataram newspaper and also published magazine called Arya. He is known for having developed a kind of yoga called as internal yoga and he also founded a community of spiritual seekers which took shape as the Sri Aurobindo Ashram in the year 1926. Let me know in the comment section where this Aurobindo Ashram is located. See, his greatest literary achievement was Savitri, which is an epic poem with about 24,000 lines. So now we know that our answer here would be option B. Moving on to question number 3. In which of the following protected areas are you most likely to spot the great Indian bustard? Number 1. Desert National Park Number 2. Pobitora Wildlife Sanctuary Number 3. Hirpura Wildlife Sanctuary Number 4. Valley of Flowers National Park what is the context? This article in the Hindu newspaper which talks about the slow progress of solar parks and projects has a reference to the great Indian bustard and hence this question. See, some solar parks proposed to be installed in Rajasthan have posed a threat to the great Indian bustard's habitat, especially the transmission lines. And this issue has been highlighted in this article here. Now, talking about the Great Indian Bustard. Great Indian Bustard is a critically endangered bird. 
Historically, its population was distributed among 11 states in western India. But today, the population is confined mostly to Rajasthan and Gujarat. Also, small populations can be spotted in Maharashtra, Karnataka and also Andhra Pradesh. The Rola Padu Wildlife Sanctuary in Andhra Pradesh was set up for its protection and it was its southernmost limit. The Karera Sanctuary in Madhya Pradesh, which was designated as a protected area for Great Indian Bustard, was recently denotified as there were no recorded sightings of the bird for many years. Please remember that its habitat is restricted to arid and semi-arid grasslands with scattered short scrubs and bushes. So, if you remember this piece of information, you can easily eliminate Pobitora in Assam, Valley of Flowers in Uttarakhand and Hirpora in Jammu and Kashmir. So, the right answer to our question here would be one only. See, the overall population of Great Indian Bustard totals up to 150 across India, which includes about 128 birds in Rajasthan alone. And also, Desert National Park in Rajasthan is a protected area for this bird. So, the answer here would be option A. Moving on to question number 4. How many of the following occupational diseases are correctly matched? Here are the diseases and the occupation with which it is associated. Number 1. Bicinosis, textile workers. Number 2. Pneumoconiosis, coal mine workers. Number 3. Asbestosis, construction workers. What is the context? This article in the PIB today talks about the steps that have been taken to improve the safety measures taken in coal mines and hence this question on occupational diseases. See, there are certain diseases that occur as a result of work or occupational activities. Such diseases are caused by a variety of biological, chemical, physical and also psychological factors that exist in the workplace or are encountered in the course of employment. For example, the bisinosis is an occupational lung disease which is caused by inhalation of cotton or jute dust in inadequately ventilated working environments. And this is prevalent mostly among textile workers. So one is correctly matched. Now pneumoconiosis. This is a disease of the lungs again which is caused by inhalation of irritants such as mineral or metallic particles. It is also called as miner's asthma or miner's consumption. This coal worker's pneumoconiosis occurs when coal dust is inhaled and continued exposure to the coal dust causes scarring in the lungs impairing the ability to breathe. So 2 is also correct. Now coming to asbestosis. This is a lung disease that develops due to inhalation of asbestos fibre which is a fibrous hydrated magnesium silicate. Asbestosis fibres are used for building roofs, insulation etc. So, 3 is also correctly matched. Therefore, the right answer to our question here would be option C, all 3. Now, let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2017. Consider the following statements. In tropical regions, Zika virus disease is transmitted by the same mosquito that transmits dengue. Number 2. Sexual transmission of Zika virus disease is possible. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? Of late, we all know that Zika virus has been in news again. The Zika virus is transmitted by Aedes aegypti mosquito, the same one that transmits dengue and also chikungunya. So, statement number 1 becomes correct. And also, Zika virus is primarily transmitted through mosquitoes. But it can also be sexually transmitted. So, statement number 2 is also right. Therefore, the right answer to our question here would be option C both 1 and 2. Now let us take up the fact of the day for today which is Agriculture Infrastructure Fund. We have taken up this topic for discussion because of a reference to the Agriculture Infrastructure Fund in today's PIB article. This Agriculture Infrastructure Fund is a medium to long term debt finance facility. Under this, interest subvention and credit guarantee support is provided on loans for investment in viable projects for post-harvest management infrastructure and community farming assets. Please remember that this is a pan-India central sector scheme. Under the scheme, rupees 1 lakh crore will be provided by banks as well as financial institutions as loans with interest subvention of 3% per annum. And this subvention will be available for a maximum period of 7 years. This scheme also provides credit guarantee coverage as well. 
the credit guarantee coverage will be available for eligible borrowers under the Credit Guarantee Fund Trust for Micro and Small Enterprises Scheme for loan up to Rs 2 crore. The fee for this coverage will be borne by the government. This particular scheme was launched in the year 2020 and the duration of the scheme is for 10 years that is from financial year 2020 to 2029. Who are the beneficiaries? The beneficiaries of this scheme are primary agricultural credit societies, marketing cooperative societies, farmer producer organizations, self-help groups, farmers, joint liability groups and also multi-purpose cooperative societies. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.